stomach-turning footage, frankly, of raw sewage flowing from a water pipe into two lakes in Yorkshire has prompted campaigners to slam the vile stench and the impact on wildlife. Solid waste, soiled loo roll, wet wipes and used sanitary products have been flowing into marshland at Freeman's Cut and Brookfoot Lake used for water skiing and angling, including by disabled children in Brighouse in West Yorkshire for more than two months. Joining me to talk about the horror of it all and what should be done is Mark Barrow from Beneath British Water. Good evening, Mark. Good evening. This is dreadful. I've seen the, I've seen the images, I've seen the, the pictures. What's going on, basically? Where is the sewage coming from? It, the, the sewage it appears to be a misconnected pipe. Um, and in theory, more or less coming direct from the toilets. And <laughs> this has been going on since the beginning of December. And we're now obviously at the end of February. The Angling Club got in touch with me, obviously, because I do the campaigning for Clean Rivers and asked if I would try and help. So two weeks ago, I started putting the video footage out there. And I've got to admit, I was absolutely appalled at what's going on. And the smell is absolutely horrendous. And in some areas, it's ankle deep in human waste. Now, it's been, as you say, it's been, I think it's been going on for nearly 10 weeks. Yes. Why on earth? Yes. And you say it's, it's something as basic as, as a misconnected pipe. Why, why isn't it being dealt with? I think because it's out of sight, it's out of mind, and yet again, the freshwater environment is suffering. If that pipe was coming out onto a high street, that would have been sorted within two weeks. But because you obviously don't know about it, it's just ignored. And I think between the likes of the council, Yorkshire Water and the Environment Agency, they need to get their act together and get this sorted because it is appalling. Uh, bear with me while I just talk to my guests in the, in the studio. Julie, that, I mean, that's your worst nightmare, isn't it? You, you're talking about, it's a, it's a place where people go for mm. recreation, whatever, angling and all the rest of it. And it's raw human sewage. It's disgusting. I mean, I was uh, reading about this on the way in today and, and what our guest has just said is completely right. If this was happening outside, a, I don't know, a high street shop, it would have been sorted, would have had, you know, cones around it, do not come near. But because it's in our waterways and killing our wildlife, frankly, if you don't see it, it's, it's not there. But for the people who walk around there, it very much is. Um, but I was also reading on my way in that the water companies have had 2,800 written warnings in 2022 um, about problems. And our sewage is apparently 80% over, uh, over capacity of our sewage. So, I mean, there's a lot more to it, I think, than just the burst pipe in this case. But I think, yeah, it's indicative of what we need to do is, is a lot bigger than that. Yeah, yeah. M M Mark... If, if you're still with me there, is this just another case of the, the profits that water companies are able to make means that they are prepared to take the, the occasional hit or, the, or, the, or, or whatever regularity of this kind of uh, disgrace? To be quite honest, where water companies are concerned, nothing surprises me. Um, because obviously I do a lot of campaigning and I do underwater filming in rivers. Every dive I do, I encounter sewage pollution and it's appalling. So, yeah, where water companies are concerned, nothing surprises me. But this should not have gone on as long as it has done. The Environment Agency tested the water, and that came back at seven parts per million. Now, I, I, I stand corrected, but I'm sure 0 0.25 parts per million, anything over that can affect, obviously, the health of the fish. And then, obviously, you've got the water skiing club that are obviously using the water, and I think they've actually temporarily closed the lake because they obviously don't want to go in it. Yeah, I was going to say, are people, are people aware? You know, are people... Obviously, you're, you're showing you've taken footage in a, in a specific area, but in, in terms of the, of the entirety of the, of the lake, you know, you could be blissfully unaware that this was going on, I presume. Uh, are people actively yeah. being warned not to go near? Yes, they are, and some of the anglers have actually started to become ill over the last few weeks. So the angling club now is going around all its members and asking them, obviously, if they've had any symptoms. And obviously, the club uses the lake for disabled children. You know, they shouldn't have to put up with this. It's 2022, not 1822. What is the wider scale? You're obviously involved in this, but your pollution in our, in our waterways. 
What, can you give us a sense of the scale across England and England and Wales, how often this is happening? It, somewhere daily on a river, there is sewage entering. And it's as simple as that. Every time I go in the river, I encounter sewage pollution. That could be via sewage litter, which obviously can involve sanitary towels and everything that's literally flushed down the toilet. September 2000, the overall health of rivers in England and Wales was round about 92%. You move forward 22 years and we're now down to 14 percent. You know, when we should be striving to move forwards, we're going backwards at a massive scale. And it's, it's appalling. Yet we'll preach to our countries about how we should, what they should do. Yet we are treating our own backyard like an open sewer. Stuart, I, I, I listen to testimony like this and, you know, and we're being bombarded all the time by politicians and the rest talking about saving the planet. Mm. Which, you know, who's, who's, you know, like, save the puppies. Who's going to argue with you if you say you want to save the planet? Yeah. But, and yet we turn, we're invited to turn a blind eye to daily uh, pollution entering the, the waterways. We, we're fouling our own nest. Well, we are indeed. And, and one uh, wonders, and, and uh, your guests may know, whether there's any correlation between this and the privatisation of, of water yes. services in uh, England and Wales. Not in Scotland, where it's still publicly owned. Um, but also, uh, and I don't know which particular water companies we're talking about here, but they, be, they are profit-making organisations with, with chief executives who, in some cases, earn vast salaries. And there must be penalty clauses in their contracts, which EA, for reasons beyond me, doesn't seem to be able to enforce. Mark, I think I'm right. You'd be listening to that from Stuart there. I think I'm right in saying, though, that the profits that are available from the, from the ownership and the running of this part of the infrastructure means that you can write off the kind of fines yes. that, that apply yes. for this yes, kind of incident. Can. And so, um, you know, is there, any, is, there any active, is there any active campaigning, any likelihood of, you know, a couple of knots being stuck on the end of the likely penalties for this kind of infringement so that it actually becomes in the interests of these companies? to prevent and to make sure this doesn't happen? It needs to be a few more knots, to be quite honest, because the money they are making is life-changing amounts. You know, and the privatisation scheme has literally failed for two main reasons, government stupidity and corporate greed, and that's what it boils down to. You know, we shouldn't be like this. It shouldn't be like this. Government stupidity and corporate greed. You're absolutely right. Mark Barrow from Beneath British Waters, thank you for bringing our attention to this this evening. Thank you. Uh, Andrew Pitts, Calderdale Council's Assistant Director, by way of a statement, said we are working on an ongoing investigation into the reported watercourse pollution in Brighouse. In cases that relate to a watercourse, we work with the Environment Agency and other organisations such as Yorkshire Water to ensure we protect public health and the wider environment in Calderdale. I'm sure we all feel the better for that.